In this video, we're going to look at a couple of ways of searching in the main browser. Now, we can get to the patch browser by clicking either in the empty field over here or the folder icon. And whenever you see a folder icon in the interface, you can get to a browser. And in that case, it was the patch browser. We can also get to it, for example, when we're on the multi page, each of the individual parts has a folder icon here. So we can get to the patch browser for each individual part like that. Now, when we're in this main browser, there are two main modes of working. We have the attributes mode and the file directory mode. And this works with categories and tags and different metadata. And the file directory just shows how the information is stored on the hard drive. So this is basically the folder hierarchy on the hard drive. It's not that useful in reality for searching sounds. The attributes mode allows you to take advantage of all the metadata stored with each patch. There are four columns for search criteria with the results displayed in the fifth one. So we have our categories that we choose from and then these three columns to filter the categories and then the results are displayed over here. We can press the info button. For example, I'll load this in just to give you an example. We can press the info button down here to get some info on the patch that's loaded. We get notes and we can see the actual tags that are used, the metadata, and we can edit that actual tag metadata in this window over here, but we'll look at that another time. I'll just hit cancel for now. And in the footer over here, we have, in addition to this edit tags window, we have some browser settings, which we'll look at as we come across the different functions. And we have a light version button, which allows us to load lighter versions of some of the more memory intensive patches. And anytime we see one of these little magnifying glasses with a zoom button over there and a little plus button, we can go in and get a detailed view of some of the additional settings. So the first way of searching is simply by choosing the categories and the attributes. And we can filter this entire browser itself by using the directory menu, and that will allow us to filter by library. So if I want to see only, let's say, the Atmosphere library, that's an older version of this, or only my Spotlight EDM library, I can filter by library, and I can go all Spectrosonics, and of course that's the entire Spectrosonics library. Or if I go all, that also includes user data. Like, for example, I think I have an extra user one that I did create in here. But I'm going to go to all Spectrosonics for now. So the first way of searching is simply by using the categories and the attributes. Let me turn the info off so we can see the search results here. Now, you'll notice when I click on the different categories that the attributes change. For example, now I'm showing type, mood, and genre. Now it's type, model, and genre. Now it's type, genre, and complexity. And all of the attributes that are called up by default are optimized to work with the tags that are in these categories of sounds. We can turn off this kind of category sensitive attribute updating in the settings over here. And we have category sensitive attributes. If I turn that off, then for example, when I switch categories now, these attributes will remain. So I can always search by author. Maybe I want to always search by Eric Persing and see only his patches in each of these categories. For example, it's one potential use. I'm going to turn it back on for now. And as expected, the attributes will change depending on the category that's selected. But we can also change them manually simply by clicking on this name and choosing from a drop down menu of available attributes that we want to search by. So that's one simple way of searching. Now, another thing we can do is use the search field here and we can use it in conjunction with the attributes. Now, for example, let's say I'm going to search pads, which is a very general category, and there's obviously a lot of results. And maybe I want to restrict those to maybe ballad. I'm working on a ballad, and I want to try out some pads, and I want to try out maybe only the Omnisphere 2 pads. So I'm going to load one in. Let's try this, and I'm going to try it out. And it sounds nice, but I want to maybe try a couple of different ones in my arrangement. Now, normally when you close the browser and reopen it, the search field is cleared, but we can lock the search field in. So for example, let's say I have that and I like it. In the patch browser here, which is what we're in, I can go to the sound lock field and lock in the search text. And it'll lock in not only the search field, but also the different attributes that I've selected and the different genres or styles within the attributes. So for example, if I close that up and I go to maybe part two now, I've called that up. We'll see we're on part two here. I have the same search and I can load in a different pad over here. And I'm going to close that up. And maybe I'm going to go to part three now and try out a different one. Again, always calling up the same search criteria because of the search field here. I'm going to close that. And now I've got a couple of different pad sounds loaded in and I can work in my arrangement and just 
play with the different MIDI channels or trigger them on different channels, but the idea is that I have them all accessed here. Now, let's say I'm gonna open up the browser again, and I'm gonna turn off the search text, and I'm gonna close the browser and open this up again here. We'll see that the search field is cleared and we're back to displaying the broad category of results. Now, another little footnote here, when we're working in the sound source browser, for example, let's go back to part one, and this is the sound I've loaded in. And if we're on the main page, we can of course get to the sound source browser here. We can also get to either the layer A or layer B sounds, but we'll look at that another time. But getting to the sound source browser here, just so you know, there's a dedicated lock button for the search field. And this is really useful because let's say I like this kind of pad sound, but I wanna try out maybe something else in layer B. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna search for, let's say sweep to look for other sound sources to layer with that first one. So I can click on one and try it and let's see how it blends with the first one. I don't think I like it. I wanna try some other ones, but first I wanna lower the volume of this second layer. So what I'm gonna do is lock this and I'm just gonna close the sound source browser now. There's one we just put in. I'm gonna close that. And when I bring it up, I'm gonna get my same search results. So I can hear that blended. And again, I wanna maybe narrow down my results here. I'm gonna to go to additive synth, so that gives me less of them. So maybe I do that, try that. So that works nicely. And again, I can unlock it and lock it so that when I close this, and maybe I wanna now change the first one, for example, I'm gonna go there and it's back to additive synth and the sweep results. So I can layer those two. And again, I've created a completely different sound now by changing both of the sound sources and preserving the other synthesis routing. So I'm gonna end off here, but all this to say that in the browser, we can browse using the attributes, we can change the attributes manually, we can use the settings to turn on or off the context sensitive attributes so that when we switch categories, they can change or not change if you don't want them to. And we can lock in the results in the patch browser here by using the search text field over there. I'm gonna clear it for the moment. And when we're working in the sound source browsers, it's a little bit different. There's a dedicated padlock icon here to lock in the searches. We'll continue with more in the next video.